<laughs> well, that didn't take long. I already lost the body pin. All right, well, slight problem after that nasty cartwheel. I don't know if you can see it or not. My rear drive shaft is pretty bent. I mean, pretty bent. But I don't think it's gonna stop us from running. So we're gonna rock it till it falls off. I don't think uh I don't think that's supposed to be out here. That thing hit pretty friggin' hard. Alright, well that's gonna have to be reattached. Man. Nothing I'm gonna be able to do about that. Man, this thing's got some power with this 18 tooth. Man, I'm not ready to be done.
Drive it to me real quick. I just, every time it flips like that, I gotta check to make sure the ESC is right. I already had a wire pull out. This is when you don't wanna stop driving. Stop it again. Hold on. I got I gotta check that ESC again. Uh we resort resorted not to jumping because this ESC is not it's already came unplugged once. And it's starting to again. Alright, keep this thing upright. Now, Brayton, it's all right, go ahead. Now we do. Because <laughs> you got to stand it up anyway. So, we got many more good videos coming now that I found this place. Old golf course. Plenty of green, plenty of hills, plenty of jumps. Time to bring the big boys out. Not that the landslide ain't holding its own. Very impressed. Granted, upgraded motor, but I'm still only running 4S. Speaking of, eh, ah, pretty hot. Pretty, pretty hot. Throw a battery pack considering we broke a dog bone and ESC came loose, unplugged. Not a bad run considering. Alright, well, I'm gonna take a peek at it. Haven't really had a chance to clean this thing up yet. It's, it's filthy. <laughs> but uh yeah, that was a good run, man. I, I know, like I said, I know I messed up that dog bone or uh center drive shaft, but you know, and this thing at one point, see this buckle, this was messed up with uh, the construction site I went to. So I know I did this, but it seems like that crease, just even with the Gorilla Tape, just won't stop. Ooh, I think I put a little bit more right there, it might help. But um, it's a weak spot, so I'm assuming because it's a spot, well it's under here, but still. Either way, uh, you know, this body didn't get the full attention that I would normally give one of my, you know, upgraded bodies or anything. So, uh, it's held up very well considering, but it's definitely taking a beating, that's for sure. So this was my problem. I mean, I tried to attach it to this, and apparently it just wasn't enough adhesion. You know, it kept me from jumping the way I wanted to jump, but I just didn't want this thing flopping. You know, this is the rig, this is the fix I did to it, just by holding the wires. So I was really nervous that, you know, with any more jumping that it was gonna give me a problem and possibly either yank yank my Deans, yank these apart, or pull out of the ESC, which is what it did to me uh, on the last run, or the one run. But um, this thing's filthy, gotta get it cleaned up. So I can actually just make sure there's nothing else besides that bent drive shaft. But I've already planned on um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that and bend that back out. Because I don't have a drive shaft for this, but I do want to take this back out. Uh, so I'm just going to bend that back out straight for now until the new one comes in. And, you know, anybody that's ever seen me break stuff, you know, I, I still have the same mentality that I did when I was buying the parts at full retail. You know, I don't want to go out and spend money for a part that I can straighten out. It's just, 
you know, it's a waste of money to me. And plus, it takes part of the fun of the hobby is fixing your stuff and, and feeling good about, hey, I just saved that part, you know. So that's what I'm going to do. Even though it's bent, it'll straighten back out. I mean, you can see clearly it still drove. I'm, I'm assuming that, I mean, it just buckled. I mean, I guess as hard as it hit, it doesn't have a support like a rampage or anything like that that comes down from here. It does have this brace piece, but it is all plastic, so I'm assuming it just kind of crunched a little bit. But it wasn't a big deal. Um, you know, made a little bit more of a noise and maybe draw my attention to it. I might not even notice if it didn't didn't sound different. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get cleaning this thing up, man. The T-bone is holding up very well. I mean, this thing, I definitely, you know, the, before I could even get the camera going, um, you know, I had an issue with it at first. I had already, you know, nosed over a couple times. Um, you know, see where I started out and had the big chunks on it. Um, that was a pretty awesome flip that I just kind of double backflip but landed and slid right on my roof down the hill so it was pretty cool you know when it happened but you know with, with it coming down the next one I did after that um, was came smack down right on the bumper like cartwheel bounced came over landed on the uh, back and then right back on the front again and you know again just the bumpers are are holding up even even the rear for this one um, you can see I, I definitely damaged this yeah, it's, it's split right there. So I'll probably put a little glue in there just to hold that on. Get a little more life out of that. <laughs> it ain't going to last long. But, I mean, you know, again, I didn't do a T-bone for this. I will eventually do a T-bone for this. It just, I want to really get a good feel of how well this holds up because I am considering putting this on my um, Terramoto 10. Plus, I want to be able to recommend it to other people on Terramoto 10 and just kind of test it in general. The front, I just knew how the front was going to hold up. wasn't even taking a chance. Plus, I love that look of that uh, bar bumper. So, that's what I went with. But, again, you know, not going to cover a bunch of stuff I already did. Just want to get, kind of make sure I didn't break anything else on this thing. Um, talk about how it held up and the power difference. I mean, this thing definitely, I could tell a huge difference on that trigger pull. Um, it's only a 2200 compared to the 1920 running on 4S. But it is a, you know, it is a thicker can motor. So, it does have a little bit more torque. Um, bigger ESC it's just I can feel it man I, I would um, do it maybe once just to see it but I would, would imagine success is going to be just a little bit too insane for this again I'm still running stock tires right now and in terrains like that today I mean you could even see uh, the couple flips I did that we caught on camera um, the pancaking and things just off the 2200 um, I mean they got really thin and you could even hear it just whipping against the side of the body um, it's just it's a it's a lot of power uh success is going to be insane um and again i don't really need another success vehicle i'll try it for for everybody's sake and and just to see what it does but uh you know this will probably be a 4s vehicle for me i mean until i see different i, I loved it I, I might even keep the stock tires on it just for a while because i don't have any stock tires because uh, i i change them all out but i do like Every once in a while, I do like to dig into, you know, sand and places like that. So I don't mind having a set of stock tires if it doesn't become a, a problem. And I don't do much on-road with this truck. So, so far, it hasn't really been a problem or anything I haven't actually noticed. So, you know, again, strap tires are good. Um, definitely give you better control of the vehicle overall. But when you're getting out there bashing and just having a good time, I mean, it doesn't hurt you to have some ballooning tires. It's when you want an all-purpose vehicle and you want to take it on-road, off-road. And, you know, people that might only have one or two different vehicles. That's really when you want to focus on that, um, strapping your tires or getting some really good tires. Because there's absolutely nothing that I see wrong with these tires as a stock vehicle. they got a nice nice feel to them. Uh, you know, they do pancake up. They are a little bit worse now. But, again, so far they haven't been a problem to me. I didn't, I didn't notice anything to do with tires or even think about my tires this whole Thing until actually you know them saucers um, when I saw those things go up but again I'm not going to bore you guys with all this um, I'm going to get this thing cleaned up and get my ESC figure out a fi way to fix this and mount this on here properly because it won't fit in that box um, and then I'll, I'll adjust it and see what I got to do to that I might show that later or in another video just kind of what I did or what I do so uh, definitely want to find something to do with this I've noticed it was flopping around, but again, you know, even though I chewed this up, 
messing around trying to dremel it out for that bigger pinion. It, it can't get in there, but I still just don't want it flopping around in here, so I'm going to figure something else out for that, too. 300 bucks. I mean, what more can you really ask for? This thing's a beast. So, and again, ignore the upgraded motor because I was saying it was a beast with the 1920, and we're not talking much KV difference. It's still a beast, even though I am upgrading this. It's just a beast of a vehicle. You know, the way it handles, um, the beating it's taking, that's what I mean by that. Again, this is all something everybody can do, so, or not do. Alright guys, uh, thanks for watching, and um, I look forward to getting back at that old abandoned golf course, man. That thing was a, thing was a diamond in the rough, man. I, I've known that area for years, and, and never even knew that was back there, so, you know, now I know. We'll get some of them big trucks out there, hopefully, and get some more action. Alright guys, stay tuned.